What's up, Foundry? Oh, man, I am glad to be hanging out with you guys on your device, on your TV, if you know how to airplay or whatever that is, and wherever you're at. But I'm pumped. It is Christmas break, and y'all are big chilling. And the fact that you decided to hang out on Instagram or YouTube to watch this says something about you. So I'm pumped that you're here. Um, if maybe if you're watching this and uh, you've never joined us at Foundry in person, my name's Britton, and uh, I'm the student ministries pastor at our Manistee campus. Um, I wish... I can introduce Adam, but I can't. And it's probably because I love you more than he does. And that's just the fact of the matter. I wish it wasn't true. I really do. And you can talk to him about that when he gets back from vacation. So, uh, but I'm here, I'm hanging out with you guys, and this is our Christmas Stories series. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. We, we were coming in, it was Christmas Eve, and, and we were ready so excited, expectant for what the next day would be. We had just left my grandma's house and we got like the socks and underwear presents, but like we didn't get like the stuff, you know, the stuff, the stuff from the list, the stuff that only you and Santa know about, the stuff. And I remember we come home and it's cool. I got a pair of jeans or whatever and, and socks and underwear. My great grandma brought a homeless guy to that Christmas Eve party and that was kind of wild and weird, but whatever, it's time. Mom and dad, they, they say the statement. If you don't go to bed, he'll never stop here. He'll fly right over. Trauma, right? But we're getting ready, and I, I remember my mom, she takes us in. We, we go to bed, and I can't stop thinking about it. Tomorrow, my life will be changed. It'll be here. My list, I've been, I think, good enough. My list is going to come true. And I lay there, and I fight the sleep as hard as I can, you know, but sooner or later, it takes over, and I fall asleep. I remember you wake up in the middle of the night and you kind of work your way into the living room to see if anything's there yet, but the tree's still empty. How do they do that? I don't, I don't know. But I go back to bed and I'm like, okay, maybe she's right. He won't stop if I'm awake. So I go back to sleep. I remember waking up the next morning. It's absurdly early, way too early for anybody to be awake. And I, I run in and I wake my mom up and it's Christmas morning. And I immediately go to the living room and there's the tree and like magic, the presents are underneath it. It's like they came out of nowhere. It's like this guy was real. There's Christmas presents all of a sudden and this was the best day. And I remember ripping into him and doing the thing and there it was. Nintendo GameCube with three games to go with it one of them being the greatest video game ever created, in my opinion, Mario Soccer. And I remember that day, my brother and I, we sat down with that GameCube and we played all day. For so long, that was Christmas. It was expectant, it was exciting. Sometimes it was disappointing. But I remember, it seemed like that guy always came through with something. I don't know how it got under the tree. I'm not really sure what that process looks like. But I know that when I woke up on Christmas morning, it just happened to be there. And that reminds me kind of of the gospel. I don't know how it happened. I'm not really sure, but I just know that Jesus is here. And, and whether I understand it or not, that was the plan all along. It reminds me of John, 1 John chapter 4. It says, God's love was revealed among us. What a crazy thought that this God of the universe, this creator of the heavens and the earth, he deemed it worthy or needed or necessary maybe to come to be one of us. You see, I think often we, we misconstrue this idea of Jesus that his first existence was, was the moment he was born into the manger. But, but what we need to understand is this guy, Jesus, this God that was remil, revealed among us, he existed before that moment. He existed in perfect you, unity. Excuse me, that's awkward on Instagram. He existed in perfect unity in heaven with God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. They were the Trinity. It was perfect. It was pure. It was community. There was no reason for anything to change. But God decided he's going to put this on, <laughs> this body, right? I, I, I don't know why he would do that. He decided, you know what, I'm going to go need food. 
I'll probably need to take a nap every now and then. And while I'm little, somebody might have to burp me. <laughs> kind of weird. But this God, he came to the earth and, and his love was revealed among us. God in the flesh came to earth and his love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that, if you, if you have your Bible or, or your device, circle, underline, highlight this next phrase, we might live through him. God's love was revealed among us. He took on our likeness. He came down from heaven. He invaded earth. For what? So that we might live through him. So that leads to the question, and maybe we've already answered it, I don't know. What did he come to do? Why did he come here? Why in the world would he leave that perfect situation of community and communion with God the Father and, and the Holy Spirit to come and, and dwell among us? And I know what some of you were thinking. You're like, I know, right? What a waste of time. My life was good without him. If anything, it's made my life more difficult. I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying my life. I don't really need this Jesus guy. But I think something we have to understand about this concept of Jesus bringing life to earth when his love was revealed among us and it says here that we might live through him. What did he come to do? He came to bring us life. He came to bring us life. I love the way John 10.10 10 talks about this and I'm getting there, right? Take your time, hurry up, right? John 10.10, 10, it says... A thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And this is Jesus talking. He says, but I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Some translations say that they may have life and life to the fullness. You see, and I know what some of you were thinking. My life's pretty good. I don't really need this full life thing that you're talking about that Jesus has to offer. You see, but what we have to understand is all of our enjoyment outside of Christ as a governor, right? I'm not saying you can't enjoy hanging out with your friends if you don't know Jesus. I'm not saying that sports aren't fun if you don't know Jesus. I'm not saying you can't enjoy the almighty fajita if you don't know Jesus. But what I'm saying is this, this, this enjoyment, this goodness that you find, it has a governor, it has an end, it has something, it'll never be enough for you. But Jesus, he came and he came to bring life and, and life to the fullest, life abundant, something we can't fathom or completely understand, but something that he promises to us. Emmanuel, God with us. He came to be with us. See, something I think we forget often is that we're worshiping creatures. We were created as worshiping creatures. And I know for maybe the atheists watching this, you're like, man, I don't worship anything. We all worship something. We all worship something. We can't help it. We're built for it. And this full life, this idea of life to its fullness for the Christian, it's found in complete surrender and worship of Jesus. It's found in the fact that the every day, my, my time in the locker room or my time playing sports or my time with my friends or the time I get to spend at church, it's bigger, it's better because I get to do it with Jesus. Why? Because he came and his love was revealed among us so that we might live through him. You see, what this, this text is telling us is that God made love visible to us and among us. He came to bring life. And I think often in our, in our culture and in, in the context of seventh through 12th grade or wherever you're at today, often whenever we think about the people we know that identify themselves as Christians, you know, we think about these frail, these stale, these defeated, these crumbling people. 
that are just always sad and there's, le- there's just not enough and they're, they're following all the rules and their life is boring and there's just nothing to it. And I, I'm here to reclaim the fact that that's mere Christian propaganda. Uh, that's a lie that the world is trying to sell you that if you belong to Christ, your life will never be what it could be if you just chased your own dreams. If you just did what brought you happiness, that's where you'll find your best life. Can I be honest with you for a minute? Your best life is found in full surrender to Jesus Christ. Your best life is found in in worshiping the one who came to be among us. He came so that we could have life and life abundantly. And all these other things, as good as they may seem, they're really bad gods. Because at the end of the day, those things, they did nothing for you, they do nothing for you. But this God left perfect community to come and to dwell among us. Weird, I I don't know, I wouldn't have done it, but he did, so that we might have life. You see, but it's easy this Christmas season to acknowledge that, to, to think about the nativity and all this other stuff that's going on. And, and I think that it's easy culturally for us to spend some time in the next few weeks or few days celebrating the gift, right? The gift that this God came, and maybe it isn't. Maybe you're a happy holidays person. No offense, you're wrong. Um, but, but, but maybe this has become something that's merely it's not. And, and Martin's going to talk about that next week. But what I need to say to us today or tonight or wherever you're at is that this Christmas season isn't just about celebrating the gift as much as it is about celebrating the giver, about celebrating the fact that God himself took on flesh. He humbled himself and he came and dwelled among us. (laughs) Doesn't make sense. But he did it. That's the gift but we have to remember that this is all about the giver, that there is a God that loves you so much that he would humble himself to come and to live on earth, to come and and to put himself in situations that aren't comfortable, that aren't ideal, and ultimately for that to lead to his death, that this God would come and be sacrificed, that this God would come and die on a cross, but that's not the end of the story, but it's still Christmas. Let's be honest. I know you're like, no, that's Easter, bro. Look at the calendar. It's all connected. But he also rose from the grave, and he also ascended into heaven. He's also seated at the right hand of God, and victory is secured once for all and for all once. And that's all because he came and he lived among us. Emmanuel, God with us. See, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world in this way, that he, what, circle, underline, highlight, gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's the true Christmas story. That is the true Christmas story that God sent his son, that God came in flesh, dwelled among us, Emmanuel, God with us. And then he gave himself away to be sacrificed. And that because of that, we can come into communion with him if we confess our sins, believe in our heart, and trust him with everything. Simply said, if we say yes to Jesus, that's what Christmas is about. It's not just about a baby in a manger. It's not just about that creepy guy that sneaks into your house and puts presents underneath the tree. Spoiler alert, Santa's not real. I did it, all right? That's not what it's about. It's about the fact that that God invaded heaven and earth on a great campaign of sabotage to bring life to us. That's for you this Christmas. Maybe you're sitting here and you're thinking, man, I don't know this Jesus. I've never given my life to this Jesus. What better time than now? It's simple. Lord, I want to live for you now. Thank you for coming and invading heaven and earth. 
You see, just like Christmas Eve when I'm laying down and I don't know what's to come, and the next day I come out and there's gifts and everything's been changed. That's kind of the same way the gospel works. One day it's just a mundane, normal day. The next day, everything changes. You say yes to Jesus. Your life's flipped upside down, but you know that you know that you know that you belong to him now. So my challenge to you this Christmas is to remember the Christmas story is cool. Buddy's going to meet his dad and they're going to save Christmas. Ralphie inevitably is going to shoot that eye out. But what we have to remember is the true reason that we're here celebrating this year is because Jesus decided to come and dwell among us to bring the gospel and to change everything. And I love you guys, and I hope you'll tune in next week as Martin talks more about Christmas stories. Peace.